count one, guilty. Count two, guilty. Count three, guilty. Count four, guilty. Count five, guilty. Count six, guilty. Count seven, guilty. It is true that if Trump were sentenced to the maximum sentence for every charge against him and those sentences were served consecutively. Yes, 561 years what? is a real number. You and already know what it is. It's your boy laid back with another reaction, another review, another episode. A hey, TikTok, you up to bet. It's your boy laid back. Welcome back to my channel. A hey, two things we got to do. You got to hit that subscribe button. I'm drinking this water. You already know what it is, man. Elevate more in 2024. Elevate more in 2024. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Stay up to date with all the videos. We back with another reaction, man. Hey, we got some Donald Trump government cover up etymology. I'm just saying we got some stuff in this video. So look, you make it to the end of this one. You a real one for real. And do not forget, I got a TikTok playlist. If you went to this stuff, you can binge watch it. It's going to be at the end of the video. You can just have your mind blown. But let's go ahead and get into it. Fire Squad, what's popping? Let's get it. Donald Trump has been found guilty of 34 out of 34 felony charges. The mm. jury deliberated for fewer than 12 hours before reaching this verdict. History just happened. He will be the first president to ever be convicted of a felony. And on wow. that note, his new legal status does prevent him from being able to vote for himself. It does not prevent him from being elected and holding the highest office in the land. This wow. is Donald Trump we're talking about, so I'd be shocked if he didn't appeal this decision. And that would begin a really long process up to the state court of appeals. As of right now, the prosecution is asking for a July 11th sentencing. And let's wow. say he is sentenced. There is technically nothing in the Constitution that says that you can't be elected from jail. So no. his schedule has freed up for the summer for now. This is a hell of a thing to go campaign on. Wow, he can be the president in jail. Listen, I just want to talk about how crazy Donald Trump's presidential campaign is right now. So currently, four days a week, this guy is sitting in criminal court in New York City facing 34 felony charges for allegedly falsifying a bunch of business records to cover up the fact that he had an affair with an adult actress while his wife was sitting at home taking care of their newborn baby and he wanted wow. to cover up the scandal so his election prospects in 2016 wouldn't be interfered with. He didn't want the American people knowing about the story. Meanwhile, while Donald Trump is not in court the days that he has off, he's posting campaign ads calling for a quote, unified Reich taking language right from the Germans in World War II, if you're catching my drift here. That's Donald Trump's campaign right now. Why are people even thinking that this is a choice? Why are people even deciding between Joe Biden and Donald Trump? Joe Biden is the obvious choice. Good policy, good man, and even if you disagree with him, look at the alternative. Donald Trump, who's doing everything I just mentioned and more. This is the easiest choice as Americans will ever have to make. Biden 2024 every day. Comments. My president's got street. Hold on, do your own research. I gotta say that. I gotta say that. Do your own research. That's definitely something I gotta say. But let's go. Right now, he's been convicted of 34 counts. And you know what? There's a lot of people out there in the streets that were convicted too. So now you can relate to President Trump. I'm so oh, wow. pleased that there's finally some accountability for Donald Trump. He's evaded the law for many years, decades. And it's finally caught up to him. Our first reaction was uh, sadness for America, sadness for Trump. But at, at the end of the day, it's only going to increase his support like every other time they indicted him. Very scary. We're in a third world country right now. I don't even feel like we live in the United States. It can happen to him. It can happen to any of us. This is the, the legal system working. And uh, this, is, this is how America is supposed to work. And I feel very happy for America. I feel very happy for democracy. The, the media is not telling the truth, no. He's an innocent man. Those people, they didn't know what they were doing. It's a great day for the American people, for uh, everybody who believe in the law. To see that no one is above the law. We have convicted a former president of the United States we. of America. We've gone over a clip. 
The question as to whether or not America will react to this, whether his numbers will go up or down, I don't know. But I do know what I know. And what I know is that this case is riddled with errors. It is reversible. It will not get through to the appellate division and the first department in New York, or certainly the Court of Appeals before the next year. And people mm. say, should it go to the Supreme Court? No, it can't go to the Supreme Court unless they exhaust all of the state court appeals. I am, I, I've spent 32 years in this system and I am totally disillusioned. You had a judge and you had a DA who literally campaigned on making sure that this uh, president would be indicted. We've mm. got an attorney general who did the same thing. This is a new era in America. And I think it goes against the ilk of who we are as Americans and our faith in the criminal justice system. She said what she had to say. <laughs> we now know what Trump has actually been charged with. So is this true? Let's get into it all. For most legal analysts, the indictment left something to be desired. It was a bare bones indictment, which basically just cited each count and the relevant law without much extra explanation. There are 34 separate counts of falsifying business records. All of these relate mm. to hush money payments made to three separate people, which Trump allegedly falsely labeled as legal services. Importantly, these are not 34 separate crimes, but separate counts. Basically, every single false business document, every false check is a separate count. Now, falsifying business records is normally just a misdemeanor, but it can become a felony if the falsification was done with the intent of committing another crime. And here's the huge mm. controversy. What's the other crime? We still don't know exactly. Which is pretty surprising given the stakes here. At a press conference, the Manhattan DA mentioned that Trump falsified the hush money payments in order to help him win the 2016 presidential election. But wow. here's the issue. That was a federal election. And this is New York state law. It's currently legally unclear if a violation related to a federal presidential election can be the underlying crime that elevates a state misdemeanor to a state felony. Another issue is what's called the statute of limitations. Most crimes can only be prosecuted within a specific time time period. In New York, it's two years for a misdemeanor and five years for a felony. But the alleged crimes occurred in 2017, which is more than five years ago. Prosecutors will argue that New York law allows the statute of limitations to basically be frozen if Trump was continuously outside of New York. And honestly, this entire case might hinge on that word, continuous. Trump's lawyers will argue that he frequently visited New York, even if he formally resided in D.C. or Florida. This whole aspect is, again, pretty legally unclear. But you can guarantee one of the first motions that Trump's lawyers will file will be to dismiss the case based off of the statute of limitations. Finally, getting to a prison sentence if it should ever come to that. Technically, each felony count here carries up to four years in prison, but there's no Ooh. mandatory sentence included with these crimes. And for a first-time nonviolent offender, these felonies usually don't result in any prison time. Wow, so he can have 34 felonies and not do no time. So sports personality Colin Cowherd absolutely ripped into Donald Trump today. Take a look at the clip. I'm, I'm constantly being sold in America by Donald Trump. Uh, crime rates are skyrocketing. No, they're actually not. Starting in 2023, they have plummeted coast to coast over 200 cities. Violent crime rates are down. I mean, Los Angeles and some cities uh, may tick up in certain areas, but it's in America. He's selling me. It would be like watching your football team and they play well and win. And your neighbor says they're playing terribly and keep losing. Mm. No, they're winning and they're not playing terribly. Like you can't keep selling me on how bad the country I live in is because it's not bad for me or my friends. I have a friend that's a stay at home dad. He's not rich. I have friends who work part time starting up businesses who have worked at the same place forever. I have middle class friends. You know, Trump once tried to sell a vodka and acknowledges he never drank ever. <laughs> He's never really drank alcohol. Oh, but he tried man. to sell a vodka. So I, I've thought oh. for a long time he's just kind of a con artist. Ooh. Well, Donald Trump is now a felon. His campaign chairman was a felon. So is his deputy campaign manager, his Whoa. personal lawyer, his chief strategist, his national security advisor, his trade advisor, his Whoa. foreign policy advisor, his campaign fixer, and his company CFO. They're all felons. Wow. But Colin Coward put that absolutely brilliantly. The America that Trump is selling us or trying to is not the America we actually live in. And ultimately, as Donald Trump found out, no one is above the law. Not you, not me, not the President of the United States. So shout out to Colin Cowherd, uh, that was a great segment there. And he's right, we're not buying what Trump is selling. This is spicy. It's a bunch of hooey. I'm gonna vote for Trump either way. Do you think it's fair that he's been found guilty? Do I do, I do. I think it's the rule of law, absolutely. I think it was rigged, the whole thing. They didn't ever really have a crime for him. They just wanted him out. Well, I believe Biden and his people or whoever must have 
made sure that this would happen before the election. I'm sad about the state of uh, you know, the, the court system. It makes me angry. I think it's politically motivated. I think he probably, he's probably guilty of, ha of having done that, but I don't think it was something that was necessarily an indictable offense. I think they're stretching the law. I think he should go to jail. Anybody else would be behind bars. Cohen was behind bars. Martha Stewart for doing something you know, kind of similar was behind bars. And mm. Why is he special? If I'd done it, he, I would be in jail, so if he's he done the crime, do the time. Legendary quote. I want to congratulate all the Trump supporters on how they handled the guilty verdict yesterday. What I saw was a group of people that was calm and collected, never lost their shit, and certainly never made any excuses about their leader. You all showed no hypocrisy whatsoever and understand that when crimes are committed, they should be punished, no matter what is happening politically in America. Not one of you cried or punched a wall or posted anything on Facebook about a banana republic or a two-tiered justice system. Your constant admiration of law and order would never be superseded by your love of an orange game show host that allows you to be a terrible human being in public. Oh. I, for one, am so proud of you and how you handled yourself, and I cannot wait to see you shine from today all the way through election season. You guys are the best. Oh, he's trying to be funny. Orange host. There was a verdict? You didn't know there was a verdict? I must have been. Um, yeah. No, I didn't. Tell him the verdict. Guilty on all counts. On all counts. Woohoo! Yeah. Viva Trump! Viva Trump! They're destroying our city, our country, that's what they're doing. I know he's guilty. I am good with it. I don't expect Trump to go to jail because he's a rich white man in America. But Todd Blanc said a lie is a lie, a conviction is a conviction. It's very sad day for America. Why do you feel that way? Because this is political prosecution and there's abs absolutely nothing behind this case. Y'all let me know in the comments what y'all think about the verdict. Fire away. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's very entertaining. Listen, he's going to get away with it and he's going to win. Watch November. Wow. Yeah. This is just a play. He's not going to be, he's not going to go to prison. I, I know that's what you want, but it's not going to happen. Trump's going to win. You see all my black people, my Hispanic, what he did in, in the Bronx. That was amazing. That was a success. And I know that it's very cringy for you. He's going to win. Trump is a Terminator. He's a cyborg. You can't stop him. You can do whatever you want. But He's Joe Biden win. stopped him last time around, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> He's a 10 man walking, mate. But he did, Oliver. I mean, he lost oh. to Joe Biden. <laughs> no. So you, this, you this can't stop him. This is a new Trump. This is a new one. It's a new one. Watch. A new what? Just watch. What am, I, what am I watching? You're going to cry. Listen, you can't stop this man. What do you like about him? He's invincible. He's invincible, so he's invincible so much that he lost the last he's election he ran. Invincible. He's so he's invincible he lost to Joe years. Biden. He's still there. Joe Biden is not going to a home, nursing home. <laughs> Oliver, I'll leave it there. Thank you for your call. Wow, he said he's invincible. He just lost. Donald Trump is now a convicted felon after being convicted of all 14 felony counts. Can he still run for president? Very Absolutely. Poor. There are only three requirements in the Constitution to become president. Natural born citizen, 35 years old, and a resident of the U.S. for at least 14 years. He fits the criteria for all three. In fact, if he goes to jail, you know, he's, his sentence is July 11th. If he is sentenced to prison time, he can still run his campaign from prison. He can still That's be president crazy. from prison. That's like there, there's nothing that changes here at all whatsoever. And I know y'all going to be like, well, he shouldn't be able to run. Sure. But it's going to be a Biden and Trump rematch come November, baby. Absolutely. Whether Trump is in jail, whether Trump That's is crazy. not in jail, he can run the campaign and the Oval Office from the clank. That is what he can do. Now, he is the first president to be a convicted felon. But that's just unprecedented shit. That does not affect his ability to run for president. He has been very clear that he ain't dropping out of the race. The Republicans have been very clear that he is their presumptive nominee. That is wild, though. Donald Trump had to sit there and hear them say guilty 34 times. Drop wow. the beat. He had to sit there and they're like, guilty, 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 Fucking, he brought his son.
TikTok is crazy. The first post-conviction polling is out, and it portends a possible tidal wave of terrible, disastrous results for convicted felon Donald Trump. Convicted In separate felon. polls by Ipsos for Reuters and by Morning Consult released last night and today, 15% of Republicans and 8% of those identifying as Trump supporters say he should now drop out of the presidential race. In the other poll, 10% of registered Republican voters say they are now less likely to vote for him. As always with things Trump, there is the caveat that things often do not stick and these numbers might be soft. But these numbers as they stand now are incredibly disastrous for Trump. I have posted a bulletin edition of the Countdown podcast. It is now available wherever you podcast and also on YouTube. This is going to be 2024. He gets found guilty. Is that going to change the way you vote? No. Actually, I hope he does get found guilty. Infamy. America loves the bad guy. And the underdog. Did you make this shirt yourself? No, I wanted it online. Either way, to have these allegations against him is so frustrating. Do you think Trump will be found guilty? Uh, no. He's the greatest president we ever had in our I life. I already know who I'm going to vote for. I mean, it wasn't him ever to begin Valid with. Valid elections are more important than any one liar. Yeah, Joe Biden. You realize Hillary never accepted the validity of the election. Of did, did. did you protest against Hillary? She, she, no, she said the Russians got him elected. She said he's an illegitimate president. I'm sure this case will keep going, going, going. You have the nerve to, to say that? Opinion. It's not an opinion, it's fact. Biden lies he every off. single day. He got up on his bench. He walked off about to play his flute. <laughs> what up there? What happened? Yeah. What? Delphi! 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 <laughs> Ma, calm down for you have a damn stroke. <laughs> Jeez. It is true that if Trump were sentenced to the maximum sentence, for every charge against him and those sentences were served consecutively. Yes, 561 years what? is a real number. And this just means if you look at the 78 felony char charges across the three criminal cases so far, you go, OK, here's 31 felonies. This one could get you up to four years. This one could get you up to five years. And you just add it all up. You get 561 or a number very Jeez. close to it. Now, in reality, in practice, the way these large cases often go is over the process of adjudicating and trying the case and going through it. Sometimes charges will be combined. The number of charges will be reduced. Some charges will be eliminated either because the prosecution doesn't have an interest in pursuing every single charge individually or they realize that they don't actually have the evidence for every single charge individually. Mm. If you get to the point of negotiations around a plea, often charges will be consolidated or dropped or there will be something like, listen, if he pleads guilty to these five charges, we'll get rid of the other 26, this sort mm. of thing. So the number of charges is often reduced by the time you get to the end of a case, be it a, a verdict or a plea agreement at sentencing. You often will not get the maximum for every single charge for which you are found guilty. That would further reduce this number from 561 to a much lower number. And then in addition to that, even once you are sentenced, often you will see that some of these sentences will be served concurrently rather than consecutively, meaning if you have one sentence for four years and another for five, the timer starts on both of those on the same day. So it's not mm. nine, but it is five uh, in five years. You serve the four and the five. Um, and then, of course, in addition to that, you have the practical consideration, which is that at Trump's age and his health, I mean, he's obese and doesn't eat a good diet, doesn't exercise. Um, statistically speaking, a 10 year sentence is a life sentence. So that is certainly a practical what? consideration as well. So 561 years. Is it literally accurate in a hypothetical sense? Max sentence on every charge served consecutively? Yes. Do we really need to think that it is likely or even probable that Trump gets 
even a 40 year sentence. I believe the answer is no. And from every legal opinion I've read, that's the situation. That's where we are right now. Five hundred and sixty one years. Guilty, guilty, man. I ain't about to read all these shits, man. How you get caught lacking 34 ties, bro? 34 ties? Yo, guilty verdict's old enough to have a midlife crisis. Don't look at the audience. They don't like you either. Stop it. Stop it. I ain't even know. I ain't even know you could commit this many crimes at once, bro. What do you got to say for yourself? Y'all remember Kofefe? Get this motherfucker to a jail Bro, TikTok is going wild. Inside, we're hearing guilty on one through five. One through 12, we have now oh, 13, no. 14, guilty. 15, Stop. guilty. You may hear there are a split of folks here who have been <laughs> protesting on both sides of this case. Uh, some cheer, Stop. some boos. As we are now getting the information uh, from the jury, we are up to 18 counts, 19 guilty. Remember, we have 34 oh here, God. 20 guilty. And again, these counts were very similar, what they were looking at. It was different occurrences, essentially, of the same crime, a misdemeanor that was elevated uh, by being linked to a felony, uh, to an underlying crime. We are now 24 counts in, all guilty from inside. This is what we are hearing from our producers, up to 26 guilty. Now, remember, each of these counts could maximum have four years in jail. Um, President this Trump would be considered crazy. a first-time offender. These are non-violent crimes. Uh, so it seems that it is unlikely the judge would sentence him to prison, but we are now up to 31 counts guilty out of 34. 32 guilty also coming in from inside the courtroom. Our producers now Jeez. saying 33 and 34. They're saying guilty on all 34 charges. This is craziness here, man. Ben, I did ben, three rallies. Ben, you've taken millions, millions of dollars. You are with that? Are people like me, like ordinary people like me? You are taking a grave. You are taking a grave with the fossil fuel money. You are taking it. You are taking a grave with the fossil fuel money. You are taking They said you got to go. Nah. Donald Trump was found guilty today, but I don't know why. 34 federal charges of falsifying business records is hush money. Okay, but what did he do? He paid Stormy Daniels before his 2016 election so that she wouldn't sell the story to media outlets about their affair. So? Mm. This was three months after his wife gave birth to their kid. Well, who's Stormy Daniels? She's a professional actress who threw it back on him. Lucky her, another thought lying for clout. No, he was convicted. Look, why is this a big deal? Falsifying business records is a huge deal when you're a billionaire trying to hide unethical activity. That's stupid! He's innocent! How is he innocent when he was convicted on 34 counts of 4K guilt? Because he said, look, I don't care that he was guilty, he just made a mistake. Let him go! So is he guilty or not guilty? And should we let every criminal go because they made a mistake? Absolutely! On a serious note, I'm gonna mortgage my home and sell my children to help him pay off his debt. Take what? my offering. Why? Shut up! We've already raised 43 million! Now I'm gonna sell my organs and vote twice as hard! How are you gonna do that? Fake votes, dummy! It's all the rave nowadays. Duh. You'll go to prison. If Trump's a criminal, then I'm a criminal. Just wait for January 6th. We're on the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The former president, Donald John Trump, convicted on all 34 counts by a jury <sighs> in New York. The Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, who brought these charges, spoke just moments ago. And while this defendant may be unlike any other in American history, we arrived at this trial and ultimately today at this verdict in the same manner as every other case that comes to the courtroom doors by following the facts and the law and doing so without fear or favor. Mm. Former President Donald Trump just announced a press conference at Trump Tower tomorrow morning. For the first time in this country's nearly 250 year existence, a former commander in chief of the nation's armed forces is now a convicted felon. Wow. And there will be much more reaction to come in the days, weeks, and months ahead. But undeniably, this is a day that will be written into the history books. This, I ain't gonna say it, y'all say, I say the yes! same thing. Yes! Trump's officially a convicted felon, guilty of 34 counts. Now he can't run for president. No, he can still run for president. What? Yeah, despite all of the criminal charges, Trump is still eligible to be president of the United States. But he's a criminal. Like an actual criminal.
Yeah, you can still run for president in this country even if you have a criminal record. So what you're telling me is that that man can still be president despite being charged 34 times? That would be correct. And I'm assuming that his supporters are still gonna vote for him. They've already started crying and making excuses. Does this country do anything right? No, not really. <laughs> no, not really. Count one, guilty. Count two, guilty. Count three, guilty. Count four, guilty. Count five, guilty. Count six, guilty. Count seven, guilty. Count eight, guilty. Count nine, guilty. Count ten, guilty. Count eleven, guilty. Count twelve, guilty. Count thirteen, guilty. Count fourteen, guilty. Count fifteen, guilty. Count sixteen. Guilty. Count 17. Guilty. Count 18. Jeez. Guilty. Count 19. Guilty. Count 20. Guilty. Count 21. Guilty. Count 22. Guilty. Count 23. Guilty. I'm pausing because it's coming in. Count 24. Okay. Guilty. Count 25. Guilty. I thought she needed a break. Count 26, guilty. Count 27, guilty. Count 28, guilty. Count 29, guilty. Count 30, guilty. Count 31, guilty. Count 32, guilty. They cheer. Count 33, guilty. Count 34, guilty. That is 34 felony counts here, all guilty verdicts. They started cheering in the background, that's nuts. Is he gonna be in jail while being president? Is jail time on the table here? It is on the table, I would say, highly unlikely to, to, to that question. 34 felony counts, each one of which does carry with it the possibility of up to four years in prison. No mandatory uh, minimum, meaning there no jail time could also be a sentence. I don't mm. see, personally, him being sentenced to prison time. The judge could impose a variety of different things. Uh, home probation, for example. He could serve it in Mar-a-Lago with an ankle bracelet. He could serve it uh, non-concurrently, meaning he could go on weekends for example, to some sort of custodial sentence. I personally think there will be heavy fines um, and some sort of uh, heavy probation associated with this and, sentence. And he can be president while on probation. Absolutely. There's nothing in the Constitution that prohibits it. This story, man. I'm a very innocent man. This was a disgrace. This was a rigged trial by a conflicted judge who was corrupt. It's a rigged trial, a disgrace. They wouldn't give us a venue change. We were at 5% or 6% in this district, in this area. This was a rigged, disgraceful trial. But the real verdict is going to be November 5th by the people. Mm. And they know what happened here, and everybody knows what happened here. You have a Soros-backed DA. And the whole thing, we didn't do a thing wrong. Trump don't be caring. Former President Donald Trump has been convicted of 34 felonies in the state of New York. My name is attorney Ugo Lord, and I'll discuss the legal steps that happens next, not the politics. Even while on vacation, breaking news never sleeps. The legal question many ask is what happens next and will the former president actually go to jail? On July 11th, the former president will be sentenced by the judge in this case. And it is only the judge, not the jury, that will decide what that mm. sentence will be. The former president has been convicted of a class E felony, and it's important to remember that that 70 to 90% of class E convicted felons in the state of New York actually do not receive jail sentences. But of wow. course that is all gonna depend on what the judge takes into account while deciding what his sentence will be, such as his prior history, as well as how egregious the crime is. Even though many are asking whether or not the president will serve jail time, it is way too early to discuss that. After the former president has been sentenced by the judge and he's going through the appeals process, the president's lawyers will likely apply for what's called a bail pending appeal, which which means he can apply for bail instead of serving his sentence while he's going through the appeal process. The former president is entitled to one automatic appeal, and if that does not go in his favor, then he has the ability to apply for the New York State Court of Appeals, which is the highest court in the state of New York. That court does not have to hear his case, but they can if he wants to. 
Consequently, it is extremely unlikely that former President Trump will serve any type of sentence before the November election. This will likely go well into 2025. If you have any questions regarding the legal aspects of this case, like whether or not the former president will even be able to vote as a now convicted felon, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching this historic wow. moment, even on vacation, and I look forward to keeping you updated every step of the way. He out there grinding, boy. Salute. But what she wanted me to do is write up a report with the garbage reporting to justify the strike on the location. So I refused to. And then I said, I'll write up a report. So I wrote a whole report on why every piece of that information was wrong that they'd ever use that location. And I submitted it to her. So the next week, I went to a week of training. So, you know, most CIA trainings off site. Mm -hmm. So I was off site in a, a different part of town. And it was the end of that next week. And, and, and I, get, I go out to my phone. We don't have phones in the office. And I have a message. And it's like, you need to, you need to see what's being sent around. She went to another person on our team she actually went to a DOD detaily because she thought she could get the Department of Defense person to lie because the CIA person pushed back on her unfortunately and she wrote it up for a, a, a nomination to do a strike on the location knowing all the facts were wrong because I had already sent out a week wow. before to the team and so I sent it to all the leaders across our four branches and then the two bosses above them and luckily my senior boss who he's pretty famous he was like the main analyst boss on the Osama bin Laden raid so he's like in the movie and stuff for um, Zero Dark Thirty. He luckily said, okay, I'm going to assign someone to investigate this. She was willing to lie about a location in Pakistan to appease like a congressperson asking us to do something. When did things get weird? The time where I entered the hangar, I witnessed uh, recovered alien spacecraft. The disc, the flying saucer that I worked on. Uh, the Department of Naval Intelligence in the United States was back engineering. Despite intense scrutiny over the years, Lazar's account has remained consistent and he has passed multiple polygraph tests. I had a little American flag stuck on the side and I thought this finally explains all the flying saucer stories. Working at a classified base known as S4 out in the Nevada desert. They had uh, one of the reactors out of the crafts, which was an antimatter reactor. It was in the demonstration of the reactor working. This is technology that doesn't even exist. When it was running, it produced a gravitational field of its own. Now this is something that we can't do. Efforts to discredit him, including claims of falsifying his educational background and criminal activity, have not been substantiated. We called the lab, they said, no, he wasn't here. We don't have any record of him. And then we found the lab phone book with his name in it. I called him back, I said, well, there it is. Ah, well, we still don't have any records. You're going into Whoa. this craft, what are you seeing? It's a very ominous feeling because first of all, everything is one color. It's like a dark pewter color, and there are no right angles. Everything looks like it's fused together. What do you think this was designed for? The seats were small. Obviously, it was made for something small. There's nothing else in there. There's just seats, the reactor, and some of the subcomponents. There's no control panels. There's no bathroom. It's just a very bare bones thing. The reactor was in the dead center. Around there were three seats. They're not consoles. They're large rectangular objects. There's nothing on them. There's no buttons. There's no light. There's and no they look the same color. The same everything thing. is the same it's color. Just a different shape. Right. Those are the gravity amplifiers. The big rectangular objects. Underneath them are the gravity emitters. I was, I, I physically was in the center section and I mm. stuck my torso in the bottom section and hung upside down so I could see how the gravity amplifiers were positioned. It doesn't fly like a flying saucer would in a 1950s movie. It flies belly first. I mean, it may set down conventionally, but it always rotates. It does a roll maneuver, puts its belly towards the target, and then moves. Yo, this dude was breaking it down, wasn't he? It's my personal belief based on fair amount of evidence that they're not aliens they've always been here mm. um and i and i do think it's spiritual that's that's my view so and, and again it's not provable but based on uh, on the evidence i think i'm with absolutely. you absolutely well, if the u.s government has in fact had contact direct contact with these beings whatever they are i've already told you what i think they are and has entered into some sort of agreement with them which is which is the claim of, of informed people, um, I would say, whether they're right or wrong, I can't say conclusively. But, 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 yeah, but, but wait, wait, wait. if that is true, I mean, it's a very, very, very heavy thing. There are forces that are not human, that do exist in a spiritual realm of some kind, that we cannot see, and that when you think about it, sort of make you think we live in an ant farm. Yeah. <laughs> being, right? And Absolutely. that's just, that is real, yeah. okay? Mm. UFO cover up. So look, you got a Snapchat going on, right? Y'all located in Florida though. Let me tell y'all something y'all don't know about 
the world. What's going on? So look, you you scroll right, you keep going until you find Iran, and you just zoom in, like go down until you see Dubai. So you keep going in when you see Dubai, like just keep going in. You see, and you'll see like this this type of island. I don't know what it is, mm. but like. Y'all, if you know, man, I don't even know what to say right now. Like, I'm speechless right now, bro. Like, this shit's so crazy. Just look. Italy, what France, do y'all see? Ontario, Explain Michigan, this. Ohio, Missouri. Texas, Indiana, New York. Like, can somebody explain this to me? What the government had? Y'all let me know if that What would the United Snapchat. States government have done if TikTok and Instagram were available during the war in Iraq? Because to this day, our government is still hiding evidence of unbelievable war crimes. And I'll just use the various abuses that took place at Abu Ghraib prison as an example. So the prison came under the use of the American military shortly after the invasion. It would take the span of the next few years for a number of photos and interviews to show the true horrors that took place there. And they included naked Iraqi prisoners on all fours with leashes around their necks. Americans smiling next to tortured or even dead Iraqi prisoners. There's an image of a living prisoner with human feces smeared across his face and body. And there are widely documented instances of the grape and essay of men and women. And if all of this wasn't bad enough, approximately 70 to 90% of the prisoners were mistakenly detained. Now the Whoa. abuse was likely far worse than what we know, but as I hinted at before, President Obama actually censored the rest of the photos as he feared the full truth would inflame anti-American opinion. Now seeing as many politicians of today were both in office back then and supported the Iraq war, I think it's a real shock for them that they can't just deny, downplay, or quietly cover up atrocities committed by America or its allies like they used to back then. Because as Obama kind of hinted at, I think if Iraqi civilians were able to release footage of the abuses that were happening to them, the ensuing outrage would have pushed many of the people in power today out of politics decades ago. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments and follow for more. Man, man, man. Iranian scientist unveiled his new invention. A car that he says is powered by water. The car can run on 60 liters of water. And it's able to travel up to 900 kilometers in 10 hours. Power was generated at the H2O. It's good to hydrogen. That check engine light on though, my boy. Only produce water vapor. Next to zero pollution. Wow. Internationally registered. Wow. That's a game changer. Those in electric cars for sure. Found this hole in his farm. Okay. Like a huge ass hole, right? Yeah. So he looked down and it was deep. This hole, he tried looking down, complete mm. darkness, super mm. deep. So he bought hella rope, hella rope, hella okay. rope. And he tried to measure it. Yeah. It turns out it would be longer than the height of a tall ass mountain. So what? Hit that hole mm -hmm. might very well be the deepest hole in the world. Oh, shit. that's what he's claiming, right? So he ended up going on all these news broadcasts, all these yeah. podcasts, everything talking about it. Mm -hmm. And one of his stories was yeah. that one day he saw a beam of light shoot out of no. the sky the from that hole, almost like a no. transparent light. Okay. No. So what is what is going on, uh -huh. right? So apparently what happened to test it out, to test that hole out, when it, he had a lot of dogs, and I guess one of his dogs passed away. Uh -huh. And just to test it out, he threw his dog down the hole. No. What? He threw his dead dog down the oh, hole. Oh, dead dog, okay. The dead dog, right? Mm -hmm. And the next day... Gone. The dog... What? <laughs> what happened to the dog, man? Yo, so I just heard about this whole Andrew Dawson thing about this guy disappearing, getting taken out by the CIA because he was on something. I literally have goosebumps right now. I want to show you guys something. All right, so I found the coordinates of where he took the picture. I marked it here with his name so I don't forget. But it was right around the Cedar Side. You see Cedar Side here behind the star, Cedar Side Regional Park, which means that if he was 
on this road looking this way, which he was, it would have been over on this mountain here. So when I scroll in to this mountain, and if you guys remember what the pictures look like, you see this road here, but if you remember what the pictures looked like, there was like a building with two antennas. Look at this shit. What's that? What is this? A tall figure and the building with two antennas. What the fuck? What? So it's been almost nine months since I posted that video. And has anyone noticed like Andrew Dawson, that whole topic, everything about it just completely fell off the earth? Like what happened to it? Why was there never anything else done about it? Like doesn't this make you just... Doesn't this make you fucking just question everything? How can something like this just disappear and then fucking aliens come up all of a sudden? Like, fuck. Let me know about that Andrew Dawson stuff. Spoken on camera before about his time working in the secret bunker. Basically, they carved out a city underground that could survive a direct hit from a nuclear blast. After you go through the security, you walk in and it's basically an underground tunnel. There's a blast door that was three and a half foot thick that weighed 30 tons. Uh, you go through like an airlock and they had two of those doors and then you walk another uh, half a mile. A half mile deeper into the mountain is the bunker itself. And you're going past five buildings. Those represent the five rings of the Pentagon. And each of those buildings are three stories tall and they probably have 50 to 80 offices per floor. Wow. The buildings are mounted on springs to survive the shock waves from a nuclear blast. Wow. There's a common cafeteria capable of serving 3,000 people three meals a day for 30 days on lockdown. They had a barber shop in there with one chair. It's got massive reservoirs, generators, even a crematorium if needed, post Whoa. office, medical facilities, and emergency command and communication links to the U.S. military all around the world. Wow. Hey, i never seen no shit like this, y'all. I'm at a, this is like a cave network of underground warehouses. I'm picking up a load in Springs, Springfield, Missouri. Yo, i never seen no shit like this. This is crazy. Wow. I'm in a fucking big ass underground cave system with like 25 warehouses in this bitch. Like, what is the reason for this? Like, this is crazy. That looks nuts. This is fucking crazy, y'all. The story is way deeper than what you think. Kenlock, Missouri, once a thriving African-American community, experienced a significant decline over the decades, marked by a series of socioeconomic challenges. Initially established in the late 19th century as a vibrant suburb for black residents, Kenlock faced numerous setbacks, including discriminatory housing policies and limited economic opportunities. As industries and jobs moved away from the area, unemployment rates soared, leading to a decrease in income levels and a rise in poverty. The decline was exacerbated by a lack of investment in infrastructure and education, leaving the community with deteriorating schools and inadequate public services. But what if we told you it gets deeper than racism? What if we told you that we did some extensive research and it showed that the city of Kinloch, Missouri was exposed to the toxic chemical uranium? Wow. St. Louis has been associated with uranium processing and storage due to activities related to the Manhattan Project during World War II. Malincroft Chemical Works in St. Louis played a key role in processing uranium for nuclear weapons. Over the years, concerns have been raised about the environmental and health impacts associated with these activities. One specific issue revolves around the Westlake Landfill in Bridgeton, a suburb of St. Louis. If those barrels were placed at Lambert Airport, why wasn't Kinluck, Missouri investigated by the Environmental Protection Agency? Could it be a mass cover-up with numerous residents that lived in the area eventually dying from cancer or mm. other health-related incidents caused from radioactive exposure? Jeez. What's odd is that the same time the EPA was investigating the Times Beach disaster, Lambert Airport began its unethical buyout from Kinloch residents, promised an airport expansion that never happened. Could it have been that the ground was too toxic? Okay, this is a bit creepy. Let me know what you guys think. 
So why does NASA have all these old school cars? My thoughts are they're cars without computers in them. Mm. All from the 1970s. Mm. I wonder what. They're preparing for an EMP blast. What's odd is they're not just old school NASA cars. Here's a news car. How did they he have get a there? whole fleet from NASA vehicles, semi trucks, ambulances. Perhaps this is where that $50 million a day budget is going. Because we all know it's certainly not getting us into space. Collectors of CGI videos and apparently old school cars. Let me know what you think they're using them for. Question everything, friends. Until next time. No computers in the cars. Because... It, uh, the American public would say, why are you covering this up? I guess you could say, why are they still covering up Kennedy, the, the Kennedy assassination? There's nothing there. I mean, it's been over 50 years. Everybody's dead. But in this is about power. It's about control. It's about money. It's about greed and corruption. And that's what runs this country right now. And that's a disgrace. Let's all have a little language lesson about the word conspiracy because nine times out of ten on this platform when I hear someone use it, they're using it wrong. From Merriam-Webster, conspiracy, noun, the act of conspiring together or an agreement among conspirators or a group of conspirators. What does conspiring mean? The verb of the first definition. The verb to conspire means to join in a secret agreement to do an unlawful or wrongful act or an act which becomes unlawful as a result of the secret agreement or to just super basic to act in harmony toward a common end. Some of you are using the word conspiracy to mean a delusional account of events. A fictional, fanciful story that only people in tin hats in the middle of the woods would concoct. People with dilated pupils who have been snurry. You know, the, the socially engineered term made for you to stop critically thinking. Okay, thanks for coming to my TED talk. You've probably heard that Eve was formed from one of Adam's ribs. But the reason behind that translation choice might be misogyny. Wait, what? Yeah, in the Bible, there's actually a proper anatomic word for a rib bone. It's the Aramaic Allah, and we see it in places like Daniel, where a bear has three rib bones in his mouth. But in Genesis, when Eve is being formed, it says that God took a cella from Adam. And this word is never translated as rib anywhere else in the Bible. In all 40 other instances, it's either translated as half or side. Like in Exodus 37, the Ark of the Covenant has two separate sides, or the two sides on the split door that leads into Solomon's temple. But you know, if you're interested in promoting a worldview in which women are subordinate to men, it doesn't really help you to have an origin story where Eve comes from an equal part of Adam. You wow. kind of like the vibe of Eve coming from this tiny, insignificant rib. And so... Words are spells. It's a lot of hidden meanings behind the English language. Let me tell you. Go watch part one first. But first example, you know how people say follow, fall low? You know how you go through the week, you know, the weekdays, week days, until you get to the week end. And then what do most people do on the weekend that they can't do during the week? They drink that alcohol. And what they say alcohol has, them spirits in it. You know how people be jokingly be saying that, you know them alcohol has in it. Why you think they call it booze? Booze. I could go on and on and on and on. This is just part two. Oh, and for the non-believers and the ignorant folk, go to Google and look up the word etymology before you speak on anything. Mm-hmm. But anyway, at the end of the day, stay prayed up and set those intentions on a daily basis. Okay? Okay. Read the screen, y'all. So what do I mean by the secret spells of the English language? Well, let me share with you what I call our premier life sentence. And it goes something like this. We awake each morning and go off during the weekdays to earn the living at various jobs and undertakings until we come to the weekend. And this seems perfectly acceptable to most people. 
However, more people die between 6 and 9 on a Monday morning than any other time of the week. So I do what I call a translation of the English language, and I spell that T-R-A-N-C-E with the idea that words cast spells. So when you translate that life sentence, you remember that a wake is a funeral party for the dead. Let's talk about how the English language is composed of spells and witchcraft. Many of us use these words without even realizing that we are spell. I'm real big on words and, and how you use them. That's always been a thing for me. Casting on a day-to-day -day basis. In school, we learned how to write our names out in cursive. Cursive. Why do you think they also make us write our names in cursive when we're signing our signature? Like, you ever notice every time we say the word good morning, we experience all this death around us? And it's very imperative that we understand the meanings and the etymologies of these different words because one word can have several different meanings, such as the term morning. Like when we say good morning, like what's good about morning? Another one will be when you go to work to earn money. You're putting out all this energy into trying to earn something that's depleting your energy. You have two different meanings of earn. You have earning something as an achievement, and then you have earn, which you have that is filled with ashes of right. the dead. It's trickery behind the words that we use you're projecting all these things over your life life and death is in the power of the tongue so whatever you say is what causes the reality that you have it's really a play on words remember as kids when we would recite those tongue twisters that we were told it would be one word in that tongue twister that had several different meanings to them so we didn't really know what we were saying y'all such as poor you have two meanings of poor you have poor and juice and then you got low economic stance you work during the weekdays you're in a daze working hard putting out all this hard effort into working a nine-to-five job i think a lot of people recognize that part the whole weekdays part during 2020 when people was able to actually sit down and stop for a minute and actually get out of the rat race and be like, hold on, man, I just noticed that all I do is work. All I'm doing is focus on this. Well, my focus should be on my family and my friends and stuff. You know, like, I think people, it start flickering in their minds around that time. And now you're so stressed out, feel exhausted of energy. Then on the weekend, that's when the days of the week end, taking the load off of the stress that you were experiencing from your job. All these words have significant meaning, especially when you speak them aloud. Our minds don't have the distinction between when we are communicating with one another and ourselves. It only knows you. It doesn't know the person that you're talking to. So every word that you say has a direct impact in your reality. Really take note on the words that you've been using mm -hmm. and step back and see how those words that you've been using all this time has affected your reality. Mm -hmm. Yo, the English language is a whole setup. I don't know if you know this, but words are spells. That's why you gotta spell your words. They teach you how to spell. And back then, they would teach you how to write in cursive. Keyword, curse. And you curse somebody out. These are words that we say and we don't even really pay mind to them. But words are everything. Through the TV, what do they do? They broadcast, so they're casting spells. And the people of the show or the movie are the cast. See, Hollywood mm. comes from the holly tree. Wizards will make their wands from the wood of the holly tree. Do their sorcery. Now, what do they call shows and stuff like that? They call it programs because it's programming you. Then they have channels. So now you're channeling different information, Ooh. different energy, all of that. Job means persecution in Hebrew. And when you work a job, what? what they pay you? A salary. Salary means sal. Sal is soap. That's how they used to pay the ancient Romans back in the day. Pharmacy means magic, sorcery, or witchcraft. Alcohol is derived from the word alcohol, which means body eating spirit. Which Ooh. is why people act out and get possessed when they are intoxicated. That's why they call alcohol spirits. The word alarm originated in Italy as a battle cry. 
And that battle cry means to your weapons. So when you awake in the morning, awake is a gathering after the funeral. And mourning is a state of grief when somebody passes. That's why we don't say good morning, we say grand rising. But listen to this, so your alarm wakes you up. And that's a battle cry that means to your weapons. And you're now awake, which means gathering after the funeral. Then you're going to your job, which means persecution. To gain a salary, which means so. During the week, throughout the week, you feel weak. And then you make it to the weekend where you feel weakened. This is why it's so important to switch up your vocabulary. Because like I said, words are spells. And depending on what words you're saying, that's going to be manifested back. It's cause and effect. You put that energy mm -hmm. out there. Even if it's unconsciously, you put that out there. Mm -hmm. So just be aware and definitely start switching up your vocabulary. Stop saying the word spent. Oh, I spent this much. I spent money. Stop saying that. Because once you've spent it, the universe hears that. And that's it. You can't get it back because you spent it. But if you say I circulated or I invested, the money is definitely going to come right back to you. I practiced this literally when I was broke. And I noticed the shift. There's a reason why they stripped us from our original languages. And they forced the English language on us. Mm. So always be self-conscious and start using more positive words. So I already know, family. Health is wealth. Don't forget to health like, comment, well. and share. If you want more content That's like this, then definitely let me know in the comments. <laughs> Peace out, fam. When I look up the meaning of words, I use an etymology dictionary, not a standard dictionary. The etymology is the word's origin. In my opinion, from where words are spells, and a spell cannot be reversed unless you do an exorcism, mm. the original meaning of a word sticks. I could be wrong on that, but that's just intuitively what I feel. So, the word bully means sweetheart, lover, or brother in an etymology dictionary. In a standard dictionary today, it says someone that causes intentional harm. But if it actually means brother, sweetheart, or lover, if we go around and say, don't bully, stop bullying, what we're actually saying is stop being a brother, stop being a lover, stop being a sweetheart. It's the inversion of what we think that we're saying. Ooh. Same thing with the word nice. It means foolish, silly, or stupid. So if we say, have a nice day, we're saying, have a stupid day. It's not coincidence. Or maybe it is, but coincidence is pre-planning. Have a great day. This stuff, this word stuff. Are you aware of the hidden spells of the English language? Why do our words even matter? Wow. You see, words are powerful spells that can literally change your reality. Mm -hmm. In this video, I'm going to shine a light on what you're really speaking into existence through etymology. What is etymology? Etymology is the study of the origin of words and the way in which their meanings have changed throughout history mm. or his story. The English language has many hidden and secret spells in which you can use to empower or disempower yourself with. One of the first things they teach us at school is how to read and write. In order for us to be able to read and write, we have to learn skills such as spelling and grammar. Grammar is based off the old French word grimoire, which means magic book of spells. Whoa. The alphabet is just symbols put in different sequences that create spells. Mm. When creating sentences, you are sentencing someone to your spell. A sentence is to give someone a term. With every word you speak, you are literally casting a spell. A curse of cursive serving like a prison term. It takes real eyes to realize mm. the real lies of how our words can be as deadly as swords. So if you want to know what a word truly means, look below its surface, dissect it, and look at it from many different angles. Words can be viewed forwards, backwards, phonetically, etymologically, with numerology, and split to arrange different anagrams. 
all languages are a single confused babble mixing different grammatical and phonetic fractals. In other words, words are vibrations. Mm -hmm. Words have power. Mm -hmm. Words can change your reality. Mm -hmm. Words can make or break you. Mm -hmm. That's why they say that even though your tongue has no bones, it is strong enough to break a heart. So be careful with the words you speak to yourself and others. Right. Understanding etymology and word spells can help you to spell without cursing yourself and Ooh. others. Notice how I said understand right. and not understand. Right. To understand means to stand under one's authority. No one stands above or below you, me or anyone. Right. To understand is to stand from within. You see, the basic tool for manipulation of reality is the manipulation of words. Mm. If you can control the meaning of the words, you can control the people who must use the words. To give you an example, when you are purchasing a property, you have to sign a contract with your lawyer. Even though the terms and conditions are written in English, mm. it can seem like gibberish to most. Right. This is because it is written in legalese format to confuse those that are signing the contract. Ooh. It's all just a manipulation on linguistics, and that is the con. Wow. A con is to deceive someone by lying or tricking them into believing something. This is crazy. The word mortgage is derived from the old French word, which means death pledge. That's why it takes you approximately 30 years to pay it off. About the same amount of time for someone that has been sentenced to life imprisonment. Whoa. And I wonder why so many people call this world we live in the Matrix, or Mars Tricks, the Mother's Tricks. In order for the trick to be played, one must tune into their television. Tells lies to your vision. Mm. That's why it's called a television program, because your subconscious mind is being programmed. The question is, what sort of information right. is your mind being programmed with? Right. So for most people that want to stay informed with the latest news, they tune into their favorite news channel and watch the latest broadcast of those casting abroad <laughs> to cast their spells. To channel is to tune into a certain frequency mm -hmm. and channel their favorite programs. To make channeling easier, they created the remote control, mm. so they could control you remotely. In Hollywood, they call it movie magic. After watching your favorite programs or movies, you have the option to see the movie cast. If we look at the term Hollywood, it actually derives from the holly tree. The holly tree was used by druids who were known for being priests, witches, and also wizards who used its branches to craft their magic wands for casting spells in ancient times. These rituals still go on today. Mm. Hollywood movies are forms of sorcery using psychology, subliminal messages, and manifestation through what is called lesser magic and bewitchment. Some even use the term law of attraction. That's why actors and actresses use scripts and movies as they speak things into existence. Even the news reporters are reading scripts right. as they broadcast their latest information from around the world or from your local government. They are all just actors and actresses playing their role in programming you, mm. whether they are conscious of this knowledge or not. All right, so that was another TikTok conspiracy video, man. That was very interesting, especially towards the end when they started talking about the etymology, the words, the meanings, the spells. I've always been really big on 
be careful what you say like be very mindful of what you put out there even if you joking even if you just playing around and just be careful with how you project and what you say because that stuff is very powerful but the whole donald trump thing was crazy too convicted felon y'all let me know about what y'all think about this man if y'all made it this far you a real one for real also go ahead and check out the tiktok playlist but y'all let me know what y'all think about this one but till next time self-love and positivity fire squad i got you and you know it Whew.